Custom ROMs are a way to enhance the functionality on your Android phone and in this video I'll be reviewing one of the famous custom ROMs named as Resurrection Remix. In this video I'll be reviewing it on the Moto G4 Plus but it's a famous custom ROM and most of the features are common between the different devices that it is present in. The features and performance of this ROM that I will show in this review will sync in with most other devices but the battery life and camera performance can differ. I will do a quick review and then I will show you how you can install this on your Moto G4 Plus. The performance of this ROM is quite spectacular. Moving between the different system activities or different applications is quite fast and you notice a definite performance boost as compared to the stock. However, it can be a bit choppy at times because it tries to push the device a little and you might see some frame drops while scrolling or while opening applications. I also tested it with some games and applications and with heavy games and applications it performs decent, a little better than stock. The performance of the interface and in heavy games and applications is quite similar to Lineage OS. The camera performance is also quite good and is not better than stock but you have the stock camera so you kind of have a stock experience and it works almost the same just like the stock camera. You also have the Cyanogen mod or now Lineage OS camera in this one and this one also works quite good. But I prefer using the Motorola camera because it captures better photos in HDR mode. The performance is great, the camera is also good but battery life is kind of a disappointment. I've been using this for a week now and I can definitely say that there's a little difference in the battery. You get a little less battery backup and I think that's due to the amount of features and the performance increase there is. I don't have any numbers to back it up but I think it's around 10 to 15% as compared to stock. The decrease I mean. And when comparing it to Lineage OS also, I think the battery is a tiny bit less. It will still get you through a day and it is not that noticeable. And you can also use this extreme power saver mode to save some battery if you need to. When you open the settings tab, you will be astonished by the amount of features that this ROM has. This ROM is flooded with features and you can literally customize every bit of the interface. I won't be able to cover up all the features in this video because it will become really long but I will try to cover up some of the more interesting ones. This text file has all the features and just by looking at this text file you can make out the amount of features that this ROM has. The nice thing is that when you open the settings menu, they have made a configurations column that that has all the customizations or configurations in one place and you can easily scroll between the different ones and, and you can see that it's kind of an unending list. The first one is the status bar and it is not a notification panel when you swipe down, it is just the status bar and the icons that there are. You can add a custom logo to it, the Resurrection Remix logo or any other logo that you want or like a different image if you want. You can do clock customizations make it go from left to right or change the time or add AM PM. You can change the battery icon, system icons or you could use the old notification ticker if you want. You also have an option for gestures so if you want to double tap to make your phone go to sleep and you can also use brightness control if you want by swiping through the status bar. And of course you have the stock system here tuner that you also get with the stock ROM. In the notification panel, you can add different strokes to the notification panel and they would show up in the corner. You can also change stroke thickness and everything. I don't like it so I'll disable it. And this reminded me of the notifications. So guys, if you have not subscribed to this channel yet, go ahead and do that by clicking on the subscribe button because I keep making content like this. And you can also click on the notification icon next to it so that you can get notifications whenever I upload a video. You can also put a header background image like I've done it and change the background shadow and everything else. You can also add a task manager icon or make changes to the volume panel or power dialog. And next we have the recents tab where you can make changes to the recents panel and make it according to how you want it to be. You can change the position of the clear all button or make it go wherever you want. You can also style your recents panel and include a memory bar or date and time. 
and if you don't like the recent panel that comes with stock roms you can change it all together so the omni switch and the slim recents have been ported from different roms the first one is from the omni rom and the second one is from slim roms they have a different layout and you can use this instead of the normal recents panel this is how the omni recents would look like and this is how slim recents would look they both come with their own set of settings so you can make changes to that as well so the next one is the quick settings panel and in this one you can make changes to the quick settings panel here and you can add different tiles or change the layout of the tiles you can also do a quick pull down so it will directly open up all the icons instead of just showing this and you can also change the animations when pressing the buttons in the notification panel i've set it to flip there are some advanced settings as well like vibrate on touching tiles or you can add other toggles or tiles this rom comes with like a plethora of features and you have even the minute of the features like not showing a ripple while typing the pass key or directly unlocking and not having to press the tick button you can also change the color combinations or the lock screen shortcuts and you have like one or two gestures as well speaking of gestures you also have the gestures tab where where you can literally use gestures from anywhere you just have to enable this tab and now whenever you will swipe from the right you will get a gestures tab and now you will have to draw gestures here i've set up c for the camera so it will open up the camera you can set up as many gestures as you want or you can also change the trigger area or width if you want you also have a app circle bar that will let you quickly switch between different applications you guys would already know the pie control one You can also make changes to the different buttons like the power button, volume buttons or the navigation bar. You can add the pixel nav bar animation as well. And you can increase or decrease the volume steps as well. I like the animation tab a lot. You can change between the different system animations from this tab itself. You can also change the list view animations if you want. The list view is anywhere you have a scrollable list and you can add an animation to it. You can also change the scrolling modifiers to have an over scroll bounce just like you have on the iPhone and you can also change some other animations. The interface tab has some interface changes like the font size or the DPI or you can set up ambient display as well. In the miscellaneous one you have some extra features like a system app remover or an AC Linux mode changer. These are also quite useful. So I try to cover all the major features now we'll move to the installation To install this on your device you will need an unlocked bootloader and a custom recovery you don't essentially require root you can do this without root as well So if you don't know how to install a custom recovery in the how to root video I have also shown how to install a custom recovery Essentially you just have to download the recovery file and flash it via fastboot. You can watch the video it will be in the top right corner. So after you have installed TWRP recovery, you will have to power off your phone. So this installation process might differ for all the phones. This is just for the Moto G4 Plus. So you will have to power off your phone. And now to open it in recovery mode, you will first have to open it in bootloader mode. You can do that by pressing the power button on the volume down button for around 2 seconds after you are in the bootloader mode you will have to open the recovery mode you can browse all the options by using the volume buttons select recovery mode and press the power button to select it so first of all you will have to download the two files from the description box below first will be the custom rom file and the second one will be the google apps If you are downloading open Google apps you can select ARM and then 7.1.1 so to install these first you'll have to wipe the data so in the wipe section select dalvik system data and cache swipe to the right and wipe all these after you have done that you'll have to install the two files so i will first select the resurrection remix rom file and then i will just swipe to right It will take around two to three minutes to flash it. After the installation finishes, you'll have to install the Google Apps in a similar fashion. You'll just have to swipe to flash and and then flash the Google Apps on your phone. 
After flashing both of these, you're done and you'll just have to reboot your device. After you reboot, you'll have Resurrection Remix on your phone. If you don't like the ROM and want to go back to stock ROM, I've also made a video on that. It will be in the card section. One thing to note is that the first boot will take more time than usual and it will take around 5-6 to six minutes. That is completely normal. And if you like this video, click on the thumbs up button and subscribe to this channel for more content like this.